uh, grilled shrimp with a Yucatan cocktail sauce. Okay? And uh, then we're going to do, let's see, uh, what I call a caveman T-bone or a dirty steak. Yeah, baby. And, uh, and then we're going to finish up with a Oaxacan grilled corn or Mexican grilled corn. Okay? So, let's start with the shrimp. And please note that we are following the strictest of food, hygiene, all the proteins on ice. And I'm using a technique here that's called double skewering. Now when you put a shrimp on a single skewer, what happens? It spins around. But if you use double skewers like that, not only does it look cool, but it keeps the shrimp in one place. And I uh, know that I am in a, a land of sybarites and sophisticates because you can get shrimp with the head on down here, which is excellent and much my preference. So, by way of seasoning, let's see. Uh, we'll start with coarse salt and freshly ground or coarse black pepper. And then uh, a little bit of uh, lime juice. I want to show you kind of a cool cut on the lime. So you take off about a third, you cut a little notch out of it. So you go to squeeze it, directs the juice, you don't have to worry about the seeds. And I'm sure your neighbor doesn't cut his line this way. So it gives you a little boasting power. And then uh, I thought uh, we would use some southern tequila. Okay. And a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And I will do the same treatment on the uh, other side. Excellent. So, uh, how many people here are actually from North Carolina? Yeah. That's pretty, uh, pretty great. I was in uh, Anchorage, Alaska last week doing a fundraiser for PBS, and uh, you asked that question in Alaska, and about one person raises their hand. Uh, but, anyway, uh, anybody ever heard of Ed Mitchell down here? Ed Mitchell, the legendary pit master? So I met him yesterday, that was quite a thrill. I went to his new restaurant uh, at Mitchell's. Okay, how do you think we're going to keep these bamboo skewers from burning? That's not going to work, because we tried it and it burns at the same rate as undead. Instead, we're going to make a grill shield, which is a folded sheet of aluminum foil. We set it down. Now, what are the three things we always do before we start direct grilling? We keep it hot, right? One Raleigh Durham, two Raleigh Durham out. That's a hot fire. We keep it clean with a stiff wire brush. And we keep it lubricated with a folded paper towel dipped in oil. Pardon me? Well, I just don't want to set that little thing on fire. And if, you are, if you are a typical guy type person, what do you do? You have your oil here, you walk across your deck like this to get to the grill, right? But in fact, and actually I'm going to ask you, since you kindly did that, would you turn it around so the safety zone is toward me? Yeah, there you go. So we've got this set up in a three zone grill, right? Uh, so two, three zone fire, that is. Coals thicker at the back end, thinner in the middle. The third of the grill closest to me, no coals whatsoever. And the reason for that is if the shrimp starts to burn, I've got a safety zone. Advantage of oiling your grill this way, if there's any schmutz on the grill grate, you remove it. Okay, so, grill shield in the front. Shrimp on the grill. And you know what? I'm just wondering if I ought to have a volunteer. Are you are you calling there? Alright, I saw a part pardon me? What Sorry guys, she loved it up in the New York. I'll show you. So the way this is going to work is if these come out perfectly cooked, I'm going to grab the credit, and if they burn, you're going to take the heat. <laughs> What's your name? Felicia. Felicia. Nice to meet you, Felicia. The other thing we're going to remember is probably it goes probably a little hotter in the center than on the sides. So as we cook these, we're probably going to need to rotate them, move the ones in the center out to the sides. Okay? You're just there to make sure nothing erupts into uh, hideous flame. Okay. The next thing we need to do. 
is we need to make our cocktail sauce. We start with ketchup because ketchup tastes pretty good already, so if we make it no worse than ketchup taste, we're ready to make. And we're going to add the traditional freshly grated horseradish first. All right. Chopped chipotle peppers for a little smoky heat. You like it hot down here, right? Okay. Uh, well, uh, you're gonna uh, you're gonna turn them over. Freshly grated orange zest, a little bit of orange juice and Worcestershire sauce. So those are the ingredients for our cocktail sauce. And we'll simply whisk these together to make sure. Are they burning yet? The way you know when they're done, when you see a thick coil of black smoke rise from your grill, you know you've gone too far. Okay. Great, I'll tell you what, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay, we're coming along. So uh, actually it's taken a little bit longer than I thought, but happily we've got plenty to do. Let's move these up over a hotter fire. Okay, let's grab the, uh, yeah, let's pull that up. Real shield up. Okay, beautiful. Good. So, that's our cocktail sauce. Our shrimp are grilling. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what are three amazing variations I could do on a theme of this dish? <laughs> and one is that you could use a blackening spice, two is you could use a barbecue rub, and three is, what's another one? You guys give me an idea for now. Bacon. Bacon. <laughs> yeah. Bacon's one of those. Yeah. Bacon is one of those things that uh, everything tastes better than with bacon, right? <laughs> Okay. By the way, does anybody go up on my website, barbecuebible.com? Yeah. yeah. Anybody of any board members with secret handles that I can actually meet you in person now? <laughs> Reason I'm asking you is because, uh, it, as you might know, August is National Bacon Month. And uh, this month it's going to be all about bacon on barbecuebible.com. Starting with a blog on how to make your own bacon. And then we're going to show you uh, cool things you can do wrapping in bacon. We're going to do another vlog on bacon weaves. So it's uh, pretty awesome. Bacon wrap bacon. Okay. And then you can do bacon wrap bacon, of course. That's how you get 16 beard. Based on the theory that if some is good, more is better. That is also known as the guy syndrome. And it can, of course, bite you. By the way, do we have any single men in the audience? Right here. Well, if you ever need to impress a girl at a barbecue, just drip a little oil on the fire, and you'll get raging flames. Uh, works every time. Okay. Not that I would know, because I've been married for a very long time. But anyway. Okay, so. First dish then for our shrimp, we have our Yucatan cocktail sauce in an imaginary martini glass. And as the shrimp comes off, what are we looking for on the shrimp? We're looking for it to be firm, just with a little color to it. One, two. Maya, yeah? and you've done an excellent job. Nice job, so nice job. So here is our here is our grilled uh, shrimp cocktail, little chopped fresh cilantro, and we're business. One dish down, two more to go. Any questions on number one? Okay. So dish number two, also a dish of Mexican inspiration. Uh, it's Oaxacan grilled corn. And the way it starts is we just cut the tip off the corn, and then we're gonna fold, pull the husk back. The motion is almost like you're peeling a banana. By the way, another upcoming vlog on barbecuebible.com will be on five amazing grilled corns from around the world. The great debate, husk on versus husk off. Uh, anybody grill their corn with the husk on here? A few misguided souls? Any Anybody do it with husk off? Okay, I prefer husk off because when you cook corn with the husk on, uh, it's a process that's really akin to steaming, right? You steam it in the husk. Husk off, you can actually caramelize the uh, corn kernels 
Uh, it's a little bit like having an intimate act with a protective membrane. <laughs> Necessary sometimes, but better if you avoid it. <laughs> Another advantage of being married for a long time. <laughs> Don't worry, folks, it's the bourbon speaking. <laughs> okay, so, uh, ideally, with uh, some imaginary butcher string, we would tie these up. Let's see if I can do it with a corn husk. And you notice how I've kind of made a convenient handle on the corn. So, that's going to make it easier to eat. Corn goes over a raging hot fire. Let's try and tie this one up, too. Any questions? Now you guys are welcome to answer, ask questions, because it helps my job. Okay. And as the corn cooks, what we'll do is baste the corn with a little extra virgin olive oil or melted butter, or bacon fat, why not? And then season it with salt and pepper. Uh, as you travel around Planet Barbecue, and that, by the way, is the name of another of my books, Planet Barbecue. Uh, most grill masters in the world grill their corn with the husk off. In Trinidad and Tobago, they baste it with garlic cilantro butter. And in Colombia, in South America, they uh, brush it with margarine and dust it with grated cheese. And as you move, let's see, to Spain, you find grilled corn basted with extra virgin olive oil sprinkled with pimenton, which is Spanish smoked paprika. In Cambodia, they may have the coolest grilled corn of all. They brush it with coconut milk and uh, season it with palm sugar. That's kind of sweet and coconut. That is really amazing. Okay. Can you hear the snap, crackle, pop already, right? So, we'll just let that go another minute. Now, a couple other preparations we're going to need to make this happen. And one is we're going to need some mayonnaise. Another is we're going to need some grated cheese. Look at that. Do you see the, see the caramelization here? That's what I'm talking about. That is where the flavor resides. So if I do nothing else on my visit to North Carolina, but get a few of you grilling your corn naked, I will feel <laughs> like my travels and labors have not been in vain. Yeah. I leave the husk on and take my shorts off. <laughs> That's great, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. So I got a, a, a question of burning uh, importance to ask you all. The top three barbecue joints in the Tri-City area. The pit. The pit? Okay, the two of them. One in Durham, one in Raleigh. Equally good? Alright, the pit? Okay, what's number two? Old time. Cuchet. Old time barbecue. Old, old time barbecue. Old time barbecue and the Q Okay, the Q Shack. But I need somebody to write them down for me because right after lunch I'm helping to do a little Q hopping. Newport. Pete Jones. <laughs> Pete Jones. <laughs> We're going far from Pete Jones. <laughs> Pete Jones. Whoa. We're going far. <laughs> Pete Jones. Get fired. You ever notice the more people watching, the slower things grill? Yeah. Yes. But we'll just be another sec on this. Any other questions? By the way, my Facebook page is Stephen Reitland, and my Twitter page is S. Reitland, and Instagram is one of those two. And every day I post a different photo. In fact, today, anybody been up on my page today? It's a glorious pulled pork sandwich from Ed Mitchell that I had right up here in Durham yesterday. So it is... Uh, some people do pin-ups, and I do pin-ups of great uh, barbecue. Okay, so just to finish this up, what we're looking for is this golden, beautiful golden brown coloring on all sides. Now, here's the cool thing. We slather it first with mayonnaise. And I know what you're thinking. Tasty. You're thinking, wow, wouldn't it be cool to do a Nordic version of this and use sour cream instead of mayonnaise and use chopped fresh dill, maybe a little brown sugar, instead of 
<laughs> and then next, grated the traditional cheese is cotija cheese, and it can also be Parmesan or Romano cheese. Okay, then the next thing we want to add is some chili powder. And I have uh, ancho chili powder here. And then last of all, a squeeze of lime juice. And so that is our Chimax grilled corn. Let me show you how it works on another one. Any questions? Anybody know any good jokes? Yes, sir, what's the question? Tell you what, when you ask a question, tell us your name, where you're from, and your social security number. <laughs> No, just the uh, name and where are you from? I got you on it. Chef Lawrence from Baltimore. Hey, what are you doing down here, man? Yes, sir. You were an awesome button for punishment. Yeah, how about that? Um, can you also use some of the uh, spices uh, mix that you have in your book? On the, uh, I promise I didn't pay this guy to ask this question. <laughs> yeah, the question is, uh, any of my best of barbecue uh, products which are available on the website, uh, like the uh, Java rub or the, the uh, Island Spice rub, any of those are really awesome with this preparation. Thank you. Do you drive down or do you uh, fly yeah. down? drove down just to awesome. see you and drink some beer. Chef, Chef Lawrence uh, came down to help me out in Richmond, Virginia and in Baltimore, or Washington. So that is very good to see you. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's number two. And I guess the last thing we want to do now is we want to do our caveman T-bones. Caveman T-bones. Okay. This is really complicated, this one. So, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of what most people think of as an essential to grilling, and that is the grill grate. And the second thing we're going to do is just fan off the embers to get rid of any loose ash. And then we have a couple of gorgeous inch and a half thick <laughs> T-bone steaks. Yeah. And we're going to season those with coarse sea salt and cracked or freshly ground black pepper. Why coarse sea salt, by the way? Because we want to taste crystals of salt when we bite into the steak. And if you use fine salt, it sort of dissolves into the meat. Now, a couple great debates. Some people like to uh, season their steaks ahead of time. I don't. I feel like it draws out the juices. I think if you season right before the meat goes on the fire, you get the best results. Who can tell me, by the way, what are the two cuts of steak that uh, form a T-bone or a porterhouse? Filet. Filet and New York strip. Great. Okay. All right. So. Uh, instead of using the grill grate, we're simply going to lay these guys directly on the embers. Alright? You know those uh, character building exercises they do at corporate retreats where you walk on fire? Well, this is, I guess, a little bit like that. Okay. Sounds like we're getting the soundtrack from uh, from Johnny Cash. Walk the line. Reason behind William right on the embers. Right on the embers. Yeah, you're welcome to stand up and take a look. First time I did that, my wife just about had a heart attack. She said, "That's a hundred dollars worth of meat. You wouldn't. You couldn't." But I did. When you have a chance, I'm going to need that skillet. Great. And cook time on this side is about maybe three to four minutes per side. What you'll know is you'll see a little beads of blood curl up on the bone. And as soon as that comes up, I will show you. But in the interim, uh, does anybody have any questions? So quiet. I guess. Why? Why? Okay, that's a really good question. Well, first of all, because it makes eyes pop and jaws drop. <laughs> And it establishes you as a rebel of the uh, the rebel of the embers, the iconoclast of the embers. No, it gives you a surface charring and a smoke flavor and a crust you just can't get in a conventional grilling situation. It's not to say that I turn my nose up at a regular grilled steak, because that's pretty fabulous too. But this is just awesome. It's also cool looking. Never underestimate. Importance of looking cool when you're grilling. 
Okay, good question. Uh, any other questions? How are you going to turn that? Carefully. <laughs> I'm going to call for a volunteer. Uh, no, actually, um, so that's coming along. Uh, can, can you name me five other foods that we might use, uh, we might cook using this uh, caveman technique? I know what you're thinking, sweet potatoes and the skins. You're absolutely right. I know what you're thinking, an alternative to corn, for those of you who insist on keeping the corn husk on, lay the corn right on the embers. That way it'll burn the husk off, and the burning corn husk will smoke your corn. That's actually pretty, totally amazing and awesome. Uh, next time you're going to make salsa, you're going to lay your tomatoes, chili peppers, and onions right on the embers. Get little specks of charcoal. That is pretty amazing. All right. And let's see here. Okay, we'll just keep these guys moving. And here, uh, let me try and show you this. I don't know if you can see it, but kind of right down at the T-bone here, the little blood beating up. You see that? Blood is good. Everybody see that? Okay, so that lets you know it's time to turn your steak. Okay? And that skillet ready for me? Excellent. Yeah, of course. Okay. All right, so we turn our steaks, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to make our sauce. Now the sauce is what I call a skillet hot sauce. I'm going to put the skillet right on the embers, and then the skillet's going to get about a quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. And I have made a little hash of yellow bell peppers. I'll throw one in when I see bubbles of fat start to dance around the peppers. I know we're in business. I know, it's really like, how can you do that? <laughs> and you want a pair of, a good pair of grill gloves for this. Okay, and once we get some bubbles dancing around, it's red bell pepper, green bell pepper, and I know what you're thinking, why don't you slice jalapenos and make a really hellfire hot sauce. Uh, finely chopped parsley, could be cilantro, thinly sliced garlic. Okay, and we're just going to cook these ingredients together until golden brown and the garlic loses in attached to the steak, alright? And do we ever serve a steak hot off the grill? No, we always let it rest for a few minutes. How do we test for doneness? I'm using the poke test, right. Gently poke the meat, gently... Uh, okay, let's see, what happens if we do something like that? That looks kind of awesome. And then the other grilled corn, and finally our caveman T-bone, or our dirty steak. And you saw this all in real time down here in Cary, North Carolina. So, Barbecue University has come to you today. Thank you very much. <laughs>